2031 in just six years, in just six years. Don't be surprised to see a made in India fifth generation stealth bomber jet streaking across the skies. Indian skies. It will be our own avenger of death, our own angel of justice and our very own declaration of Atma Nirbharta or self-reliance. The nation will behold this object of cutting-edge stealth and supersonic prowess because in a bold move, the Modi government has given the green light to the production of high-stakes, super-prestigious AMCA, AMCA or the Advanced Multi-Role Combat Aircraft. Modi government approves the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft Program execution model. What is that? It's going to be obviously a boost for India's indigenous defense capabilities, foster robust, uh, robust uh, domestic aerospace industrial ecosystem. Aeronautical Development Agency is set to execute the program through industry partnership. So no one entity will be considered as a natural choice. No one PSU, no HAL, and everyone will have to bid to win the contract. HAL, which has been the only entity in India to manufacture fighter planes, and even when they do get the contract, they are the hub and they source from ancillaries. Even HAL will have to compete against private companies like Tata, Adani and LNT. The successful in induction of the AMCA will capture global attention, especially in the US and China. No longer will we have to lean on foreign powers and most importantly, we will be firmly in the cockpit in the eventuality of a confrontation. Viewers, I just want to quickly give you a quick comparison on various parameters between India's AMCA, which is under development, and the SU or the Sukhoi 57, the F-22 Raptor, which is a four to six generation uh, viewers fighter, and the J-20 Chengdu. Now, all of these viewers, have a look at how it compares. There's very little differentiating these. Low RCS means that it cannot be detected easily by radar either. We're talking about the AMCA. So the Felon does a little better. The basic uh, uh, tech on the Raptor and very low RCS on the Ching. So we're in the same ballpark viewers. Service date is 2031. The others have already been uh, around and they have a lead over us. But viewers, this is very, very important because it suggests that we are now going to be competing globally. And this is, this is very critical, very, very critical. I want us to speak now to two experts who are going to be able to put this into perspective, what it means and how competitive. Let's go straight across to two very authoritative voice, voices rather on this particular issue. Uh, Edgy, I have to ask you this question because it's very important. And I believe you're still in active service because you're sitting here and you're speaking up for the nation. So it's a deliberate. Uh, but Baronia Sahib, look, the fact of the matter is that India is deciding to go ahead with AMCA project. How do you view this decision? There's also now a nod to the private sector to come in. Many people will say, oh, why do we need uh, private sector when HAL was there and we have enough uh, capability in the uh, public sector, so why do we have to go private? What do you first make of this? Firstly, uh, uh, it's a very big and a very good decision uh, that it, it uh, is open for participation to both private sector and public sector equally. Uh, a very important decision. Uh, from the word go, when MCA was uh, conceived and when MCA, you know, discussions were on, this is one of the points that was projected by Air Force and I was very keen that uh, this is the project where private sector needs to come in in a big way, even uh, when I was in the uh, chair. Uh, later on, AMCA got approved and uh, this decision of how the private sector would come in, uh, whether it will be HAL led or SPV or this. So now uh, that clarity has come. And I think it is very, very important at the stage that we are in terms of indigenous, uh, you know, research and development and uh, overall uh, in, in the uh, defense uh, industry uh, capability. Uh, there's a lot of uh, energy in the private sector, there's a lot of energy in startup, there's a lot of energy in technology development and that is not being capitalized upon and therefore it is uh, right time for public sector and private sector to come together and capitalize on this. I, I'm so happy to see this so, happening. So what are the learning experiences sir, from the Tejas experiment? Oh, Tejas uh, uh, was, uh, you know, it was uh, designed and developed by ADA, uh, we are all aware, and uh, produced by HAL. 
a long time in design and development, but in its uh, in its final implementation, a lot of lessons, but a very good tech uh, that has been kind of imbibed by the industry and a, a very good product in its class for the Indian Air Force in its class. Okay. Uh, building on that, uh, there are very good building blocks, the composites, the, the fly-by-wire, uh, the, the kind of auto, uh, automated systems, the kind of data fusion, etc., etc. So, so all those needs to go into this uh, uh, new age uh, uh, aircraft, uh, be it uh, Mark II and finally the MCA. So, uh, there is a lot of learning that the industry has done. Uh, there is a lot of learning, uh, although it should have been faster as far as I am concerned for the private sector because uh, the DPSOs did not involve the private sector so much. But now uh, this change would happen uh, and uh, I think it is good for the country. M. Ashur Srivastava, what does the AMCA bring to the table? See, uh, basically uh, Rahul, I must say and taking forward from what Chief has said already, AMCA is kind of a dream project and I have seen it from both private sector and public sector and Indian Air Force. So uh, we, we wanted to create a consortium whether it's in the form of uh, HL led thing or it's a SPV where people have their equity and uh, we wanted to do two things make AMCA modular. So everybody has his own part to do, somebody does the airframe, somebody does the wing, somebody does the uh, landing gear and somebody does the avionics sensors and then fuse them. It had already been in design made in that way, that means it is modular in structure. What we needed was national commitment which I find now coming up and one thing we always said that if we really want our country to do well, we need to activate both arms of manufacturing, public sector and private sector. Rahul, for your information, for the viewers' information, I was in Bharat Dynamics Limited and that's where I was director of production and we saw this and I was also with LNT uh, heading the flight system business unit. So I bring in those two experiences and I think Oh, I mean, if you take the example from US also, the government gives money either to Lockheed Martin or to the Boeing and then it gets going because public sector, as I, I was in public sector, has a lot of oversight and your way of spending money or your way of doing uh, things faster becomes that uh, process tightened. But if you are in private sector, you face a situation, you can resolve it quickly because every situation needs some kind of uh, funding or some kind of money into it. So bringing both the things together, creating an environment something like SPV, a special purpose vehicle for MCA project will really push it very fast and accelerate it. And I'm sure we have now, LC experience uh, Chief was talking about, has given us that ecosystem. We always wanted aeronautical industry ecosystem around us so that we can get our things done uh, in-house. Now within the country we have a lot of this thing, we have a lot of tie-ups also with the uh, foreign vendors at various levels, even at major component assembly levels and all that. pre file of course we had earlier also final assembly level. So with all that coming together and synergizing with private sector participating, public sector being there and the government giving its the national commitment and pushing it, I'm pretty sure the lines will be very fast and they'll get accelerated and as timelines are being laid out, ki we should do something by 2030. Hmm. Uh, I, I don't think it's impossible, we are in 2025, we can really do it. So, so, so let me ask you Air Chief Marshal because th the question is very simple. Can we meet the timelines and how do these compare with the J platforms of China and the F platforms of the United States? Timelines, uh, you brought an important issue. Uh, I think what ARDA has done in terms of preparatory work towards AMCA, uh, not now for a couple of years, and uh, uh, as a design document, as a PDP phase, some a lot of work has already been done. And from timeline perspective, even more important that it is, uh, uh, you know, private sector is fully into it because that is the best way to meet timeline, that's the best way to, uh, you know, uh, protect from cost and time overruns. So I am now more hopeful with this implementation that the timelines would be met and there will be no overruns. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, how it will come out, uh, you, I think, asked whether how does it compare with the West or uh, with the Chinese uh, stealth aircraft. You see, this is a first stealth aircraft. Uh, the design is more or less frozen. It was frozen on a fifth generation uh, uh, fighter aircraft. The first one that will come out, let's be practical, initially is with non-stealth engines, but with a stealth design, but uh, very much capable and very much uh, required for our forces. And the very next one will be along with the stealth engines. Uh, when it comes, uh, difference between fifth and sixth tech uh, is, is uh, 
is, is in many ways in terms of some sensors, weapons, uh, and, and some kind of uh, uh, advanced systems. And I think it is important for the Air Force and industry to start putting six gen technologies in this itself. We have a 10 year period, we need to do that. And uh, what comes out finally is a nearly six gen uh, fighter that uh, should emerge. I would say that's how we need to go. So, and, so and we should not worry too much okay. uh, whether it will come out uh, as a competitor to China. Mm. It will come out. Mm. It will come out. We have the uh, capability today. We have the technology. Uh, we have the will. A lot uh, of people talk about the engine. Yeah. Now, do we have that? No, we don't. Okay. And that is why engine, it was important that uh, uh, as a follow-up of uh, uh, Kaveri, mm. a joint development program on engine for sixth generation is very important. And I do expect that uh, that decision will also get expedited because we need that to happen fast. Uh, you have raised an important point. I think it is important. So, you are saying we are still lagging a little bit in the engine design capacity. We are lagging capacities. a hell of a lot on the engine. On, on okay. the, how do we close this gap? Design. Right. Uh, no, uh, the the plan was that uh, we will do a joint, uh, you know, development program. Uh, I think uh, there were two, three countries shortlisted. Uh, it it is not the G414 uh, TOT that we are talking of. Mm. Uh, uh, fifth generation engine was another program. Uh, there was uh, in between news that uh, there are talks in advanced stage with France. Uh, earlier, Rolls Royce was also in the in the in the discussions and including GE. Uh, whatever decision is to be taken in that respect, I think would happen fast now. Mm. And that is another program which needs to take off now. So on just priority. to be absolutely sure, the engine will be imported, but everything else will be indigenous. On this, yeah. the initial uh, two squadrons that will come, mm. will come with 414 engine. Right. That is in the plan. So uh, there is a timeline that is, that is quite clear and certain for the initial FGFA. Mm. In parallel, we need to do the engine development so that after the two squadrons, uh, we have a, a fifth generation engine which is going to power it. So th that's how it will pan out. Thank you, gentlemen, for this very enlightening conversation. Thank you very much.